Hey everyone and welcome back to another Bible study. It has been a while, I feel, since we did a Bible study, but I'm happy to be back and I hope you are too. I'm glad you are here. So today we're in the book of Galatians and so we're working our way through the epistles and I am changing it now to just twice a week for the time being just because I did a poll and that seemed to be the most popular consensus. We're in the book of Galatians today and the general agreement is that this was written by the Apostle Paul to the churches of Galatia and it's basically to tell them that the gospel they were following was a false gospel and there is nothing that a human can do to make you acceptable to God which is the gospel that they were following so so Paul's message is all about the contrast between the flesh and the spirit so Let's get right into it. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me, unto the churches of Galatia. So he's written this letter to the churches of Galatia to counter the false gospel that they were learning. So he's gone right in straight away saying, hey listen, I'm an apostle, not sent from men, but sent by Jesus Christ and the Father. He was carrying God's message and what he was going to say could not be rejected. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So the central message of the true gospel was that God the Father offers grace and peace through his Son, Lord Jesus because Jesus sacrificed himself for our sins to save us from the present evil world. In my commentary saying here, a good point that this is the whole point of the gospel. God cannot look, overlook sin. I hear so many people say, well, if God's so loving, why can't he just forget the sin? No, because he's true and just. He can't just overlook the sin and pretend it didn't happen. There has to be a sacrifice. But because he loves us so much, he sent his son, who is fully God, fully man, to sacrifice himself for us and our sins. And that's not just being saved to go into heaven. This also saves us from this present evil age. It saves us from the power of sin on earth. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And so he's immediately saying how shocked he is that they are turning away from the incredible gospel. And my commentary is pointing out that usually after Paul greets the churches in his letters, he usually blesses God or gives thanks for him, gives thanks to him for the work of the gospel. But he doesn't do that in this case. He goes straight into going like, bro, how are you rejecting this gospel? Like, what is wrong with you guys? And it's saying here that the Galatians were very likely approached by the same people as those in Acts who were telling the Gentiles the law, basically, if you don't do this, if you're not circumcised, basically, then you're not saved. If you don't follow the law, then you're not saved. But that's not the gospel. The gospel is that salvation is a free gift from God through the grace of Christ. It's a free gift. We cannot earn it. We cannot work for it. This is why we are no longer obliged to keep the law in order to be saved. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So he's confirming that there is no other gospel. There's only one good news, and that's that we are justified, that we are forgiven, we are redeemed through Christ and his grace. He's the only way that we can be saved. There's only one gospel. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you other than that you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So he's saying, if anyone preaches another gospel, even an angel from heaven, now I don't want to go into it too much, but there is another faith out there that claims an angel came and gave a different gospel. If you know, you know. But if that person comes to you and preaches a different gospel, they will be accursed. Paul is trying to get them to stop listening to the false teachers. And he made it clear, this is not about pleasing people. 
because a people pleaser just tickles the ears and tells people what they want to hear but a servant of Christ speaks the truth no matter how unpopular they're going to be. But I certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man for I neither received it of man neither was I taught it but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so Paul is emphasizing yet again that this gospel is not from man. This came from Jesus directly. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. And so now he's given evidence of why he received the message from God. And he's saying, he's not the same person that he used to be. And he's confessing that in his older life when he was in Judaism, he actually persecuted the church. And I get chills because I think this is how it's going to be in the end times when many Jews finally realize that Jesus is the Messiah and they're going to change their ways. And oh, it's quite exciting. But go from Saul to Paul's. He was so against the church. He wanted to destroy it. He did horrific things because he believed it was corrupting his Jewish religion. And he was the top of the Pharisees. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. So considering how strong Paul was as a Pharisee and how much he really despised the church, we know it takes something miraculous to change a heart like that, which God did. And he revealed Jesus to Paul on the road to Damascus. And he's saying this was God's plan even when he was in his mother's womb. He knew this was God's plan all along. And at that point when God revealed Jesus to Paul, he didn't consult with anyone. He didn't go to the other apostles. He didn't need to. He was getting orders directly from God himself. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. And so the other, only other apostle he saw at the time was James, which is Jesus' brother. And he insists he is telling the truth. He wants the Galatians to know that his apostleship didn't come from another man, came straight from God. And when he did meet the other apostles, he only spent a short time with them just to get to know them, and not because he had to. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preached the faith which once he destroyed. And so after this, Paul preached the gospel into Syria and Cilicia, and the Judean churches just kept hearing that Paul was now, had gone from this persecutor of the church and it's now preaching that faith that he actually was once against and tried to destroy. What an amazing testimony and it reminds us that no one is too far gone no matter how angry they are at Christians right now how how much they spew hatred because God might have a plan for that person we don't know what it will take for that person to repent and believe and give their life to Christ. So, what a beautiful testimony. Ah, and they glorified God in me. And that's the key, isn't it, here? That when they heard that Saul, the, one of the chief Pharisees who hated the church, had now suddenly become the complete opposite. Paul, an incredible evangelist, they gave glory to God. They can see that Paul had received this calling directly from God and was preaching the authentic gospel of Christ. Glory, glory. That was amazing. So let's quickly summarize the beginning of Galatians. So it's a letter from Paul the Apostle and he's confirming that this message is directly from God and has not come from man at all. And it is the gospel, the true and only gospel of Jesus Christ 
who sacrificed himself for our sins so that we could be saved and we would be delivered from the evil of this world. And Paul is just shocked at the Galatians for rejecting the true gospel. It's a free gift and it's not one that can be earned by following the law. There is only one gospel and it's Jesus. Jesus is the only way. And even if an angel from heaven preaches another gospel, let that person be accursed. And he says it twice. Anyone who preaches another gospel contrary to that of Jesus Christ, let them be accursed. That is serious. It's very serious. And he confirms again, I'm not here to please man and tickle the ears of man. I only care about pleasing God. The gospel is from God, not from man. And Paul reminds the Galatians of who he used to be. He was Saul. He was a Pharisee. He despised the church. He was so against the church, persecuted the church. And God brought him to Jesus directly. And Jesus showed up in his life directly and gave him the message. And he didn't need to consult with any other man. He got message directly from God for his ministry. And because of that, other people saw this transformation that was in him and it made them come to Christ as well. What a beautiful testimony. So there you go. That is chapter one of Galatians. Thank you for joining me in this Bible study today. Please do leave any thoughts, takeaways, comments you've got in the section below. So remember, Jesus loves you. Lord willing, I'll speak to you soon. And until then, have a blessed day. Bye. So he calls what the Judeas are, Judeas, Judeas, and um, rewind 18. We're not doing 18. Okay. Awkward. Oh, I went too bright.